If that shooting leg pain is absolutely hijacking your day, making it impossible to sit, stand, or sleep comfortably, you are definitely not alone. On this episode of Pain Explained, I'm breaking down the nine most crucial things you need to know about lumbar epidural steroid injections for sciatica. We're talking real science, real results, and most importantly, how to know if this treatment is actually right for your situation. I'm going to be completely honest with you about what these injections can and can't do because you deserve the truth when you're dealing with chronic pain. And hey, if this kind of evidence-based pain education helps you make better decisions about your health, hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell because we're building a community of informed chronic pain warriors here. Let's dive in. Number one, understanding what's exactly happening with your back. We need to get crystal clear on what we're actually dealing with when you have sciatica. Sciatica, or what doctors call lumbar radiculopathy, happens when one of the nerves in your lower back gets irritated or compressed. Most of the time, it's a disc herniation that's touching or inflaming the nerve root. This creates that classic sharp electric-like shooting pain down your buttock and into your leg, kind of like a lightning sensation. You might also get numbness, tingling, or in worst cases, weakness in your leg. Here's the key insight that changes everything. If we can reduce the inflammation around that irritated nerve, the pain often settles down significantly. And that's exactly what an epidural steroid injection is designed to do. But here's what's important. Not all back pain is sciatica, and not all sciatica responds the same way to injections. In fact, sciatica most of the time involves leg pain rather than low back pain, making accurate diagnosis crucial before considering any treatment. Number two, what actually happens during the procedure? All right, let's explain what a lumbar epidural steroid injection actually is, because I know medical procedures can sound scary when you don't know what's involved. Think of this as a precision medicine for your irritated nerve. We use a very thin needle guided by live x-ray imaging to deliver anti-inflammatory medication directly to the space around your problem nerve. Here's how it works. First, we confirm the exact position using contrast dye that shows up on the x-ray. Then we inject a small dose of steroid medication. It's essentially targeted anti-inflammatory therapy, getting the medicine exactly where it needs to be instead of having you take pills that affect your whole body. The whole procedure typically takes about five to 10 minutes. Most patients describe feeling pressure rather than pain during the injection itself. It's really only the numbing medicine that feels like a sting of burn, but then goes totally numb after that. I always tell my patients, Imagine you have a splinter in your finger causing inflammation. Instead of taking an oral medicine and hoping some of it reaches your finger, we're precisely putting that anti-inflammatory medicine right at the splinter area. That's the concept here. Number three, let's talk about what the research actually shows. Because I believe in being completely transparent with you. No sugar coating, no false promises. Multiple high quality studies and systematic reviews show that epidural steroid injections typically provide small to moderate short-term relief for leg pain and disability, especially when it's caused by a disc herniation. Here's the timeline. The benefits are usually strongest in the first two to six weeks after the injection, though they often fade over the following months. So we're talking about a temporary bridge, not a permanent fix. This can still be really important, especially for patients experiencing severe unrelenting sciatica. Here's something crucial that many people don't. These injections work significantly better for disc-related sciatica than for pain caused primarily by spinal stenosis or narrowing of the spinal canal from arthritis, like bone spurs. Current medical guidelines position epidural injections as one part of a comprehensive treatment plan, not a standalone cure. I find them particularly helpful when the pain is so severe that patients cannot participate with physical therapy or perform home exercises without significant pain. They work best alongside staying active, physical therapy, and of course, patient education. The honest truth is that if you have a classic disc herniation that's flared up recently, leading to sciatica pains down your leg, an injection can be an effective tool to cool things down while you work on your rehabilitation. If your pain comes mainly from long-standing stenosis, expect more modest benefits. Number four, the three different approaches. Here's something most patients never hear about, but it's actually really important. There are three main ways doctors can access the epidural space, and the route we choose can make a big difference in your results. Number one, the transforaminal. This means approaching from the side and depositing the medication where the disc is closest to the nerve. Think of it like a heat-seeking missile during a targeted strike. Number two, 
interlink going in from the back at the midline of your spine. This is more like a general shotgun approach. And finally, number three, the caudal. This is going through the tailbone area, which is the gentlest approach, but might be even less targeted than the interlaminar approach. For disc-related sciatica, the transforaminal approach often allows us to target the inflamed nerve most directly, which may translate to better relief for many patients. That said, the best route really depends on your unique anatomy, what we see on your MRI, and safety considerations specific to you. This is why you want an experienced provider who can choose the right approach for your situation. Regardless of which approach is used, live imaging guidance is absolutely essential for both accuracy and safety. If someone's offering to do this procedure without real-time x-ray guidance, there's a serious red flag there. Number five, the safety risks you need to know. Let's address safety head on because informed consent means discussing both benefits and risks. I'm not trying to scare you, but you do deserve to know the complete picture. The risks of these injections include the possible side effects of steroid exposure, which include facial flushing or redness, insomnia, irritability, or procedure-related risks such as headache, pain with the procedure, or worsened pain from the procedure. Rare and more serious complications like stroke or paralysis have occurred, but the chance is less than 0.002% of the time. The vast majority of patients do absolutely fine. Specifically for transferaminal injections, many practitioners now prefer what's called non-particulate steroids, such as dexamethasone, because reports of nerve damage have been more commonly associated with particulate steroids. Again, these events are extremely rare, but the medication choice and meticulous technique are crucial. There are ways to use the x-ray machine as well during your procedure to minimize the risk of injecting into a blood vessel. Pain doctors like myself use a systematic technique for evaluating patients before, during, and after the procedure in order to minimize the chance of these events. Before any procedure, we'll review your medications, especially checking for any blood thinners, as well as checking for infectious risks. We follow strict sterile technique and use every precaution to minimize risk. It's worth noting that the FDA hasn't specifically approved steroids for epidural use. This is what's called off-label practice. This doesn't mean it's unsafe or inappropriate. In fact, many effective medical treatments are used off-label, but it does mean that we follow established guidelines from pain and other interventional spine societies to ensure we always discuss the complete risk-benefit profile with every patient. The key for you is to work with providers who follow proper protocols and can handle any complications that might arise. Number six, how long does the relief actually last? This is probably the question I get asked most. Dr. Neiman, how long will this injection last? An honest answer is, it varies quite a bit from person to person. Typically, we see benefits lasting anywhere from several weeks to a few months. Some patients get lucky and experience longer relief, while others might see benefits fade more quickly. Here's the strategy many pain specialists use. Some patients benefit from a short series of injections, usually two to three spaced out over time, to achieve maximum benefit. We're not talking about getting injections every month forever though. If you're not seeing significant improvement after one or two injections, we need to reassess the plan rather than continuing with diminishing returns. More isn't always better in medicine. Most insurance policies limit the number of sessions per spinal region per year, typically three to four injections. Our treatment protocols really align with both evidence-based practices and coverage guidelines. Remember, the goal isn't to become dependent on injections for the rest of your life. The goal is to use them strategically to reduce inflammation so you can participate more effectively in rehabilitation and get back to your normal activities. Number seven, are you actually a good candidate? So who actually benefits most from these epidural steroid injections? This is where proper evaluation becomes absolutely crucial. You're likely to see good results if your primary symptom is leg pain and not just back pain caused by a disc herniation. The pain is relatively recent or has recently gotten significantly worse we see consistency between your physical exam findings and what shows up on your MRI when everything points to basically the same nerve being affected. Each nerve has a characteristic pattern of where it causes pain and numbness down your leg. This is called a dermatome. When your symptoms match this pattern and your imaging confirms nerve compression at that level, injections are more likely to help. On the other hand, you're less likely to benefit if your main complaint is low back aching pain without significant leg symptoms. Your pain comes primarily from bone spurs and stenosis without acute nerve inflammation. 
you've had chronic, unchanged symptoms for years without any recent flare-up, and previous injections provided no relief in the past whatsoever. This is what I always tell patients. A thorough evaluation is important. We want to match the right treatment to your specific situation, not just offer the same approach to everyone who walks through the door. Number eight, what to expect on procedure day. Let's walk through what actually happens on procedure day so there are no surprises and you can feel more prepared. You'll check in and change it to a gown. We'll review the entire plan together one more time and you can ask any last minute questions. A nurse will get your vitals and make sure that there are no issues why we shouldn't perform the procedure. We'll clean the skin thoroughly and numb a small area with local anesthetic. This feels like a small pinch and burn, similar to getting a shot at the doctor's office. Then we use live x-ray guidance to position the needle precisely. This is the part that usually takes the longest because we're being very careful about placement. Most patients describe feeling pressure rather than sharp pain during the injection itself. The whole procedure takes around five to 10 minutes. After the procedure, you'll rest briefly in our recovery area while we make sure you're doing well. We'll get your vitals one more time and then you'll head home with clear aftercare instructions. Our team will follow up with you to see how you're responding and we'll coordinate your next steps and rehabilitation to help convert that short-term relief into long-term progress. We typically advise someone to come with you, although without sedation, you are able to drive home yourself. We advise you to wear comfortable clothes and don't really plan on any physically strenuous activities for the rest of the day. Most people can return to normal activities the next day. Number nine, injections are just one piece of the puzzle. Here's my philosophy, and I think this is really important for anyone dealing with chronic pain. Injections are just one valuable tool in the toolbox, but they're not the whole toolbox. Effective sciatica management has three key components, and they all work together. First, education and appropriate activity. This means staying mobile within your comfort zone while avoiding prolonged bed rest. The old advice of lying flat for weeks actually makes things worse in most cases. Second, targeted rehabilitation. This focuses on nerve-friendly improvements like lumbar extension-based exercises, core strengthening, and hip exercises designed to reduce the pressure on the affected nerves. Don't go to physical therapy for generic exercises. It should be specifically tailored to your condition. Third, selective procedures like epidural injections used strategically when symptoms are severe and imaging results match the symptoms help reduce the intensity of the pain, helping you to progress with rehabilitation. The injection isn't the end goal. It is a tool to help you participate more effectively in the other parts of your treatment plan. Think of it as turning down the bass so you can hear the other melodies more clearly. If you're still struggling after a comprehensive approach, including appropriately timed injections, then we explore other options, from advanced non-surgical therapies to surgical consultation when appropriate. Now, the key is not to give up. Chronic pain management often requires trying multiple approaches until we find what works best for your specific situation. All right, let's wrap this up. If sciatica has been disrupting your life, making it hard to work, sleep, or enjoy time with your family, remember that you have options. The key is finding the right combination of treatments for your specific situation. Here's a quick recap of the nine things we discussed. Number one, understanding what's causing your sciatica. Number two, know what the procedure actually involves. Number three, have realistic expectations based on the research. Number four, understand there are different approaches. Number five, be aware of the safety considerations. Number six, know how long relief typically lasts. Number seven, determine if you're a good candidate. Number eight, know what to expect on procedure day. And finally, number nine, remember that injections are just one part of a comprehensive plan. If you found this helpful, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell for more evidence-based pain education. Leave a comment below. I wanna hear about your experiences with sciatica and what's worked or hasn't worked for you. Remember, chronic pain is not a life sentence, with the right information, the right team, and the right approach, you can reclaim your life from pain. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.